Hello, I'm Bruce Down, and I'll walk you through the initial startup procedure. So as Ryan explained, uh, our system is all about ease and simplicity and ease of installation. Um, it's installed with basic tools. Uh, everything you want to install it is in this toolkit. And we'll walk through that next. Uh, there's everything you need to do to get ready is on the checklist. Um, you have the heat source installed, the PEX is installed. Um, you've got some tools in front of you, a splitter, a uh, cutter, and a pair of pliers. Um, you have your mix of glycol or water ready and available. Uh, an outlet near the, um, the unit, and you have your thermostats installed. So those are some of the items that you need to think about before you do the install. When you get the unit, the first step is you remove it from the box uh, and look inside the unit to make sure there's no uh, debris, remove all the packing equipment, and then you check to make sure the pumps are just seated properly. Just a quick visual inspection. Um, and then you place the system in front of the PEX on the floor, typically. And the next step is you hook up, there's an optional um, drain port on the back of the unit. And we can show you that maybe a little bit later, but it's just here near the back of the system. You just connect that to the drain, connect it to your flow. And the next step is to connect the source and return hoses to the PEX pipes. So the hoses come out of the unit and then they just connect up to the, the PEX coming out of the floor. You have um, flow in and a return for each of the PEX lines. And you trim the hoses, you know, just so there's just enough to keep it in the system so when you get it closed up you get a nice clean look. And this is just an illustration of doing the, the clamping. It's a simple clamp to the PEX of the, the silicon hose. You can just use a simple pair of pliers and so you connect your source and return hoses. And then after you have your hoses all connected up on the back, you connect up the heat source. And for that there's two hoses, typically one on each side of the unit, so you can connect the the into the water heater for the cold and the return to the unit for the hot. And the three heat source pumps are on this side of the tank. Um, it's just the illustration shows a connection for the gas is on the bottom, uh, the electric's on the top. For the electric, um, you may need to plan to make sure you don't mount it too high off the above the unit, typically about a foot above the tank. The next step is to connect the thermostat wires. Your all the thermostat wire. Um, through one of the holes in the back of the unit and bring it in. And then you pull out the, the connector. There's a connector here for connecting up the thermostat wire. You strip your wire and just connect it up. There's four different connections for thermostats. One through four, you have a power and a return connection for each one. There's some additional steps for connecting up a smart thermostat. Uh, JP43 must be removed. That's the jumper just above the connector. In this case, we've removed it for the smart thermostat on this setup. The reason is a smart thermostat requires, as you see here, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> the 24 volt supply. Did, didn't realize the slide was next, so go ahead. <laughs> so wiring a smart thermostat, as Ryan was pointed out, we need 24 volts, so you have to have that transformer um, ready and available when you're doing this install. Um, this, there's a nice picture here that shows how it would be hooked up um, with a smart thermostat and a wiring connection with the transformer. Here's even a better illustration. So it shows where the wall outlet is connected up in the power connections. Wiring an optional alarm board. So our unit typically comes with an alarm board and you can use that to wire to a smart thermostat and if you're doing that there's a J2 connector on the smart thermos or the alarm board for the smart thermostat and then um, the alarm board also has a jumper on it for setting the volume. 
So once you have everything wired up, the next step is to fill the tank. And when you plan, you need about one gallon for every 100 feet of PEX. And then plus the system requires about 10 gallons. So typical systems might have 16 to 20 gallons of water or glycol mixed you, you need to plan out. And the next step would be power up the unit. And we've already kind of been playing with this one, but the power switch is here on the right side. You simply power it up. And when, we're, when you're doing this, you um, you plug in the tank and make sure it's plugged in. And I believe also you, you pull the thermostat connector from the board when you're doing the purging so you're not getting any other signals coming into the system while you're setting it up. So to purge, you take one of the jumpers, it's just a simple little black jumper, and you go to each pump, and you just jumper the purge. And you hear a little gurgling sound for a little while, and then once that sound goes away, you purge all the air out of the line. On a, on a 300 foot loop, that'll take um, about a minute or two. Yeah, and it's quick you, actually. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it's that. Quite quick. C compared to other systems, getting the air out of it can take quite a while. So you yeah, got I mean, one. It takes a couple minutes or so, but one to two minutes, and as you as it goes down, you can easily add more. Just pour it into the system, and you just keep doing that. That one's nice and quiet. Go to the next one, might be noisy. Simple step. I don't know if the people online can hear that gurgle that happened. But it's a simple step, takes about one to two minutes. Um, next step, or you set up the system settings. Um, you set up your heat source. Typically, you set the the setting on the heat source for 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if you're using the electric, it usually comes set up for 120 degrees. Some some people like to use 110. Um, and then the next step is you plug in your thermostat connector. Make sure your thermostats are are connected to your board. And you assign the thermostats for each of the zones. So. In this particular setup, we have two thermostats, and you can go to each of the pumps and set up which thermostat you want it to operate from. So we have some here that are operating on thermostat from zone one, and then we have some that are operating on either thermostat. And you also can set the pump speeds. The system will come with the pumps all set at low, but you can change it so you can have a pump run a little bit faster if you want to try to balance out some of the heat. And those are also right there in the bottom. The um, max speed, you can get up up to about um, five five gallons per minute, but with a 300 foot loop, it's, it's about a, a gallon and a half to 1.8. Next step is you adjust your thermostats. Make sure you have everything set for the nice temperature in your house. I think we'll do that. One of them calling for heat. So another thing to note here is that um, zone four is set up as a low priority. So if you have a zone in your house that you don't want to, you know, heat all the time. So if the house is calling for heat, you have the garage calling for heat. It heats the house first. So you can set up the, the garage on a lower priority. To do that, um, it's it's a lower priority if JP42 is in. And that's near the top over here. So we're using that for zone four. And then the next step is to do a final check. And I'm doing that right now. You have the thermostats calling for heat. Um, and you check to make sure the the proper pump lights come on and zone lights come on that you expect. And at this point you also check to make sure that there's enough 
uh, glycol in the system and the, there's a water level sensor in the center bottom of the tank that you can check for that. Any quick questions? Any questions? At that and point, the system's working. And there's just a couple of things where you just put the lid back on and cover it up. <coughs> somewhat normal. The neat thing that about about it, one of the neatest things is that it provides a nice clean install look when you get done. There's you know not a mess on your wall and it looks like a you know any other normal appliance in your house like your furnace or your your dishwasher. So troubleshoot and maintenance. So there's a bunch of diagnostic lights on the top. Each of the pumps has a light and each of the thermostats. So we'll walk through that really quick. And there's a, a water level sensor and a water level light on the unit as well. So the power light is here. So this will illuminate when there's power, should typically be on. So if there's something wrong with your power supply, you can check that to make sure your power light's coming on. There's also a six volt overload light. Typically, if this is um, out or it's unplugged, it'll mean that you have a, a bad water level sensor. Um, each of the pumps have different lights. Um, when it's off, it'll be glowing a, a dull green. As it goes on, it'll get a brighter green, like that. If it's on max or high, it'll blow glow nice nice and bright we also have a, a low water sensor on the unit so if the unit gets low on water and I think what I'll do is just demonstrate that Hold on out. so if the unit gets low on water it'll protect itself shut down and then give you an audible alarm and then if you have it hooked up to a smart thermostat, you'll you get a message on your phone that you have a, a heat pump or heat problem. That's annoying. So we'll like that. And that was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can hear that. Max, there's also a max tank temp setting. Um, the, the tank can be set up so it runs the heater at particular speeds to uh, warm the tank. So if this, if it's set at the lowest speed setting, it'll try to keep the tank closer to 90 degrees. At the high speed setting, it'll try to keep it to the a tank temp of about 150, 140 degrees. There's different settings. Typically with this setting, you want to keep it someplace in the middle for the max tank temp to to get the best performance. But it gives you a way to adjust uh, the speed of the pump as it comes into the tank. If you're doing one of those underfloor installations, you'll want it way up high. Mm -hmm. Concrete on the lower end. Thermostat zone lights. So each thermostat has a zone light, one, two, three, four. So when it calls for heat, that light will come on. Um, we talked about the low priority jumper a little bit already, but there's a jumper here, so if this is in, then zone 4 will be at a lower priority. Each of the pumps has a fuse, so if it blows a fuse, you'll get a red light, and then also it'll put out the audible alarm. In all of our experience, we've never had a fuse blow. We just had to put them on for regulatory purposes. And zone, the heat source pump will, all, if that fuse goes, it will also shut down the whole system. That mm -hmm. is the main power fuse. Yep, that's the one on the end. So let's, a little bit on the fuses, checking the power. There's, the power supply is here on the end. If you have a problem with the power supply, uh, typically, you can check the cord. 
Um, the power cord is in the back. Usually if there's a problem, you just need to push that in. And, and back today when we were setting it up, there was the power cord wasn't plugged in all the way. So now it is. Any questions, comments?